Okay, so today uh, we're actually going to take a look at your first, probably your first look at logarithms, um, what they actually are. So, <clears throat> just just a second. So, um, just to, to begin with, this is what a logarithm is, what it means to us. It is the uh, inverse of the exponential. So basically, when you hear logarithm, you're thinking inverse of the exponential function. So, what you really got to think about here is normally when you do something with an exp uh, exponential graph, you end up putting the input in here as the exponent. So one more time, when you do the exponential graph, the input goes in as the exponent. So now when we do the, in the inverse, okay, when we deal with logarithms, what's going to come out as output? Exponent. Yeah, the exponent, right? Because everything's backwards. So when in the inverse, if it's the input to the inverse, that is the output of the uh, function, okay? So for logarithms, it means we're looking for an exponent. That's what you want to associate with the word logarithms, exponent, okay? So that's the simplest way to think of it, and I'll just show you some notations here. So this, if we were to read this in math, we would say log base 9 of 81 is 2. What does this mean? Well, in terms of logarithms, well, let me just see. Can anyone come up with a relationship that would make sense here? Using those three numbers, 9, 81, and 2? Sure, go for it, Kathy. 9 to the second power is 81. 9 to the second power is 81. So that's how you know those numbers so far. Um, that's how you would talk about them as exponents. As a logarithm, though, we would say 81 is the number that's uh, 9 squared. Right? We're kind of think, trying to think backwards. If I put in 81, which exponent of 9 is 81? So that's what you want to think about it, is which exponent of 9 is 81. So remember, when it's logarithms, it's always exponents that you should be thinking of. A logarithm always tells me an exponent. Okay. So let's just see if you can get the hang of what these logarithms are here. Um, for example, if I wanted to write the first one in what we call logarithmic form, then that would be written like this. Log in base 3 of 9 equals 2. And again, while you're... You know, especially when you're getting used to new terminology, you should say it at least in your head or maybe write it down in your margin as you do it. But this says 9 is the second exponent of 3. Right? Now we're trying to think of which exponent it is we're dealing with. Okay. Um, can anyone take a shot at this one here, the next one? Okay, Alice, you want to take a shot? <coughs> right, so log base 2 of 16 equals 4. So one thing you should notice right away, um, we just set it up here. What does a logarithm tell us? If we're trying to compute a logarithm, it means we're looking to find... Kaylee, you look like you're trying to... Go for it. Um, we're looking for what the exponent would be. Exponent, yeah. We're looking for what the exponent would be. So that's why, if you notice, on each of these, the exponent turns out to be the, right after the equals. Right? The log will tell us which exponent it is. Okay? Now the base, the base is nice because the base is identical to what you already know. So, for example, as exponents, I could ask a grade 10 student, they would tell me that 3 is the base here, they would tell me 2 is the base. The same applies to logarithms. Okay? So the only thing that's left, um, the number which would be here, like 9, well, that's the one that I'm looking for the exponent that appears inside the logarithm. Okay, So I'm going to let you try those next uh, four. It should be pretty rapid fire if you understand how to rearrange them for logarithms. See if you can do them in a minute. Okay, so let's see how we did here. Uh, Sandy, can you tell me about the first one here? Log 2, yeah. Of Yeah, that's correct. So again, you're trying to picture the relationship now because logs, are they're, they're not familiar. They're, they're brand new. So what we're trying to figure out here is which exponent of 2 is a quarter? Well, it's the negative 2 exponent. Okay. Now, let's see here. Why haven't I heard?
heard from for a bit here. Jason, can you do um, the next one? Say it again. A hundred. Of a hundred? Yeah. Uh, okay. And what did you put? Because negative two. Okay, so let's just double check. Does this make sense? Is 100 the negative 2 exponent of 10? No. So what do you need to adjust here? Um, You're like 90% correct. 10 to the 2 power times 10 to the 2 and then you get 100. So. 10 to the 2 does equal 100. But if something's wrong in the way we've, you've rewritten this down. Can anybody help them out? Sure, Jackie. Log best 10. 1 over 100. See that negative sign? Right? That would take 10 and, and flip it, so it should be 1 over 100. Okay? Um, otherwise, it could have also been written like this. This would have also been correct. Which exponent of 10 is 100? It's positive 2. Okay? Um, how about the next one? There's an x in there. Anybody brave enough to... Uh... Sure, Alan? Log base 2 of 8. Yep. Yeah. Log base 2 of 8 is equal to x. Okay. Anybody uh, brave enough? What would x equal? What do you think? Three. Yeah, it's 3. Good, thank you. So, um, how about this one with an x in it? Carney, did you want to try this one? I saw your hand there last time. Okay. So, um, let's take a look now going the opposite way. We have to be comfortable enough that we can go from logs to exponents and exponents to logs. So for this one, um, you can probably connect the relationship, and maybe in your head you'd say, oh, I can see these numbers, 3 squared would be equal to 9. But what you're trying to do, because you don't want to just come up with a way of rearranging the numbers, because you won't understand why it works that way. Okay? You want to understand what a logarithm is, so you should say to yourself, 9 is the second exponent of 3. So that means this is the exponent, because that's what a logarithm tells me. What's the exponent? This is the base, just like for an, uh, when we write it as an exponent. And this is the value that's remaining, so it would go here as 9. Okay. So again, I'm going to see how quickly we can fire through the next set. So I'll give you about a minute to see if you can rearrange them to exponential form. Good, so it looks like people are in a bit of a mad dash. You're, you're getting the hang of it, so you're doing fairly quickly. So here's the first couple. Now let's see how we do with the, uh, sorry, I'll leave that there in case you're still looking. Um, how about log base 6 of 1 over 1,296 equals negative 4? Can anybody, uh, okay, let's go for it. Good. Okay, how about a letter? Anybody brave enough to try with a letter? All right, Jackie. 4 to a third power equal x. Good. Okay, um, one more with a letter. <coughs> Joey, can you do this one? Um, um, 7, x 7 to the x equals 49. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so um, now if you're getting the hang of what logarithms are, you should be able to do two things. Write it as an exponent and take an exponent and write it as a logarithm. So let's try to figure out what if this was a simple question, no calculator permitted, and you had to figure out what are these. Some of them are going to be tough. Um, you know, it's hard to come up with examples that don't require a calculator. Um, so I'm going to say, you know, this one, maybe you can probably come up with a way to do it, but this is probably one you're going to need a calculator for. Maybe this one here. But see if you can do these ones, uh, you know, see if you can do it. Can you work out what would log 5 of 125 be? Can we figure that out? What, what am I asking? Actually, that's a good question. First, before we even bother to um, look for the answer, what am I asking for? Sure, Kayla. Yeah, which exponent is it if I have 5 and 125? Does anybody, can anybody think of that? Finish it off, yeah. Yeah, so this would be 5 cubed equals 125. So this must be equal to 3. Okay. Um, let's pick one that's a little bit, uh, 
Well, maybe you can do it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Someone here might be able to do the next one. With a, can you figure that out? Take a break. Take a break. You too. Take a break. Karen? Sorry? Yeah, so 3 to the 6th is 729. So this would be equal to 6. Okay? So we'll do one more together then. Um, log base 2 of 512. Okay, just so you don't explode, I'll let, I'll let you. <laughs> 9, yeah. So this would be the ninth exponent. Okay, so try the next 3 on your... Okay, so I've gone around. Looks like people are telling me that's negative 5. That's negative 4. Everybody figure out how, would, how on earth would you do this one here? Without a calculator, or well, you probably would need a calculator, sorry. But how would you do this one? Anybody have a, a strategy maybe? Is there a calculator? Yeah, calculator strategy. Let's say calculator. No, don't use log. Kathy? By 5, okay. Oh, okay. That was a good strategy. So, um, Kathy took the reciprocal, and that means it's going to be a negative exponent because you did the reciprocal. So, if I did 0 0.0016 and took its reciprocal, then it's 625. So, 625 um, is the fourth exponent of 5. So, this would be negative 4. Um, another way you could do this would be you could start with 1, and since it's going to be decimals, we can divide by 5. So the first time I get 0.2, that's exponent negative 1. Divide by 5 again. Oops, divide by 5 again. That's exponent 2, 3, 4. So now I know I'm at negative 4 as well. That's another way we could have done it. Sure, Jackie. Um, which one is negative 4? Sorry. Um, oh, I put an extra. This one's negative 4? Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Counted wrong. Four zeros, so yeah, it would be negative 4. And this one was also negative 4. Okay. So this is more typical of what you might find on a provincial exam. So let's see how you do um, without your calculator for these ones. See if you can figure out how you'd evaluate those. Okay, so let's talk about this one here. Um, first one should be pretty straightforward. I'll uh, just give you, it should be 3. But the second one... Which exponent of 5 is the square root of 5? Okay, so you might, uh, just in case you forgot, so this is like asking what exponent of 5 is 5 to the 1 half. It's right there for you to see the exponent is half. Okay, so then what do you think about this next one? How would you find the log base 2 of the cube root of 64? Amy, go for it. 6 over 3? Yeah. How did you get that? I guessed. Guessed. Okay. Ellis? Uh, figure out what is 64 to the 1 third. 64 to the 1 third? Okay. And what did you get? 4, so basically the log base 2 of 4 is 1. Right. So one, Ellis just said one way you could do this is to go log base 2. Um, cube root of 64 would be 4, and that would be... 2 as the final answer. But there's another way we can do this that we've already been, been working on. So I want to just refresh your memory that we have another strategy we used yesterday. This is in base 2, and I'm trying to find its exponent. That's what we did yesterday when we looked for exponential equations. So what if I rewrote this as log base 2, cube root, um, whoops, cube root, but instead of calling it 64, I'm going to call it 2 to the 6. Does that make sense? Then what I can do is rewrite this as 2 to the 6th to the 1 third, which is log base 2, 1 third times 6, 2 squared. So now the question is, now that I've simplified it down, what exponent of 2 is 2 squared? Well, the exponent is right there. You can see it. So again, same answer, it would be 2.